What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we're starting a 28-part series on what else but the faith once for all delivered to the saints. So if you want to follow me on this 28-part journey on the story of our Christian faith and learn why every single chapter of this story is a chapter worth dying for, then you're definitely going to want to subscribe to the channel. You're going to want to hit the notification bell. If you like a video and want to save it and you're liked videos for later, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends who might have some questions on this particular topic. Welcome to 1517 Films. I've always been, always will, contend for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints, and I figured it's time. Let's, let's just tell the story of our faith. Okay? So we are Christians. But why? Why did I say that our faith is, is a confession worth dying for? Well, for that, I'm going to have to paint a very brief picture for you. You're a teenager. You're sat in the front of the church. You've spent years uh, two, maybe three or four, being taught every nuance of the Christian faith, and all you've got to do, all that stands between you and this finally being done and you having cake and a party with your family and getting money from your aunts and uncles, is answering these simple questions. You just got to put that robe on, stand up in the front, and answer these simple questions, except for they're not so simple, are they? Because you're standing there being asked these questions, and all of a sudden the pastor hits you with this. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. Whew. Well, if it means getting to my party, then yes, by the grace of God. <laughs> We've just come back from the 4th of July. We're very keen on the idea of things that are worth dying for, ideas that are worth dying for, confessions that are worth dying for. Our family, our friends, our spouse, our children, these things are worth sacrificing our lives for. We value these things more than our life. Do we say the same thing about our faith? And more importantly, do we say the same thing about every nuance of our faith? Well, I'm a Christian and I'm going to die for that. Cool. Me too. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell the story of our faith in 28 chapters. And we're going to decide if each one would draw such a response as this. Before I let anyone take from me the word of God and ask me to deny my belief, I will kneel and let him strike off my head. This was important. Christians were always there. People of faith were always there, willing to die, then abandon this. And that should continue today. So we're going to tell the story of our faith in 28 chapters. And we're going to ask ourselves, is this a confession? This one chapter, is it a confession worth dying for? Would I rather go to my grave than be asked to deny this one chapter? So let's examine chapter one. Chapter one of the story of our faith. There is a God. <laughs> That's ultimately it. Now, let's, let's go over this story as it was previously written, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So we're going to go old school, and then we'll, we'll dissect it a little bit. Chapter one. Our churches teach with common consent that the decree of the Council of Nicaea about the unity of the divine essence and the three persons is true. It is to be believed without any doubt. God is one divine essence who is eternal, without a body, without parts, of infinite power, wisdom, and goodness. He is the maker and preserver of all things visible and invisible. Yet there are three persons. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three persons are of the same essence and power. Our churches use the term person as the fathers have used it. We use it to signify not a part or quality in another, but that which subsists of itself. Our churches condemn all heresies that arose against this article, such as the Manichaeans who assumed that there are two principles, 
one good and the other evil. They also condemned the Valentinians, Arians, Eunomians, Muslims, and all heresies such as these. Our churches also condemn the Samosatang, the, 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 the tongues of angels. Samosatang. Uh, <laughs> edit. Samosatanets. Uh, edit. <laughs> uh, Samosatens. Samosatans. There we go. <laughs> Our churches also condemn the Samosatans, old and new, who contend that God is but one person. Through sophistry, they impiously argue that the Word and the Holy Spirit are not distinct persons. They say that Word signifies a spoken word and Spirit signifies motion created in things. This is the story of our faith, the first chapter of our faith. Woo! There is a God. That's where we have to start our faith. The first thing that we should be willing to die for rather than lose is that there's a God. More than that, there's not just good and evil, as some have speculated, as, as the doctrines of our church clearly condemn, but there is a God. Who is this God? Can he be known? Well, we know there's a God. Look, I can look out my bay window right now and see the grass and the trees and the bushes and the sky and the birds at night, I can look up and see that truly the heavens declare the glory of God. The, this, this nature, this, this earth that we live on, this universe is so perfectly put together. Every nuance, every detail, every cell, every atom, perfectly orchestrated and dependent in a, a fragile, delicate ecosystem that is too perfectly succinct with itself to have not been designed. But, so we know from nature that there's a God, but do we know from nature that this God is three persons? No. Well, how do we know that? Well, in many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. So the prophets of old, those people to whom God spoke, those people who wrote down God's word and spoke it aloud to the crowds, have told us who God is because God told them who he is. This infinite God that is beyond all comprehension has declared himself to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, without any real understanding of this mystery, we boldly confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit. The Father is God. The Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, in the words of the Athanasian Creed. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. This is a mystery, and it's okay to confess that it's a mystery. Would we really expect an ant to look up at a person and comprehend every nuance of that person? Or does the ant just look up and go, oh my gosh, that's big. So much bigger and unfathomable than me. Yeah, see, when we try to fathom the concept of God, we are not letting God be God, we're making ourselves God. We, can, we as the creation, cannot understand the Creator. We have not been given that ability. It would make sense that a, a, a true God would not be one that we could so succinctly define as many false religions do. Our God is, is an awesome God, a mysterious God, a, an unfathomable God. And yet a deeply personal God, isn't he? Because he's revealed himself to us. That he is the maker of heaven and earth. That he has sent his only begotten son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our savior. And that his son, risen victorious from the dead, ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, now sends God the Holy Spirit into our hearts to convert us and fill us with faith and love and charity for our neighbor. This is the first article our faith. This is the first chapter of the story of Christianity. Now ask yourself, is this one chapter by itself something for which I am willing to say before I let you take this away from me? I will kneel and let you strike off my head. Food for thought. Until next time when we get to chapter two, the problem of evil. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross.
for all of your sins. Your Highness, we have drawn up a confession of our faith, which I believe you will find blameless 